Now we discuss about clinical types of pain. Clinically pain is of following types that is somatic pain, visceral pain, referred pain, radiating pain and projection pain. Starting with somatic pain. Somatic pain arises from the tissue of the body other than viscera. It is of two varieties superficial and deep. Superficial somatic pain arises from the superficial tissue and the features they are similar to the fast pain like it is sharp well localized does not radiate etc whereas deep somatic pain arises from muscles joints bones and viscera and the features they are similar to slow pain it is dull and poorly localized and it has radiating property now clinical conditions associated with somatic pain they are one is injuries whether it is mechanical trauma or chemical injuries or thermal injuries or any other varieties of bacterial injuries stimulates somatic pain second is ischemia when the blood flow to the tissue is blocked there is accumulation of lactic acid that is because of anaerobic metabolism and it produces pain another is inflammation which releases inflammatory mediator and that is responsible for pain another clinical condition associated with somatic pain that is muscle spasm now what is the mechanism of pain in the muscle spasm because of muscle spasm there is stimulation of mechanosensitive pain receptors also because of muscle spasm there is tissue ischemia because the blood vessels are compressed and muscle spasm also increases the metabolism when the metabolism in the muscle increases there is relative ischemia means blood flow is although normal in the resting condition but as the metabolism increases blood flow required is increased and there is release of chemical pain inducing substance another is ischemic muscular pain and this is due to activity of muscle that releases pain producing substance that is lewis p factor this lewis p factor consists of potassium adenine nucleotide and lactic acid and this lewis p factor it passes out into the tissue spaces and it is normally removed by the blood stream but when we are performing exercise this lewis p factor it is accumulated and when it reaches to certain concentration it produces pain now which are the examples of ischemic muscular pain one that is intermittent claudication what is it when there is atherosclerosis you can see atheroma formation in the blood vessels the blood supply to that particular limb is adequate at rest but when the person performs activity and when the lewis p factor is produced it gets accumulated and at that time the blood flow is not sufficient so now this lewis p factor produces pain so here what is the symptom the person is having pain while performing activity and the person feels no pain when he or she takes rest why is it so because the person is having relief from the pain during the period of rest because p factor is washed away by the blood flow another example that is pain of angina pectoralis here also there is ischemia but ischemia is to the heart muscle because there is atheroma formation in the coronaries and because of ischemia to the cardiac muscle there is release of certain substances like 5 hydroxytryptamine prostaglandins potassium kinin and adenine nucleotides they are produced from this ischemic muscle cardiac muscle and they are responsible for pain so this is all about somatic pain next variety of pain that is visceral pain which are the characteristics of visceral pain 
visceral pain is poorly localized it is unpleasant sensation and associated with autonomic changes like decrease in the heart rate blood pressure also there is nausea vomiting etc there is tenderness what is tenderness that is pain on touch and tenderness is because of increased sensitivity of pain receptors as the pain receptors are stimulated that sensitivity increases and that produces pain on touch another characteristic features with the visceral pain they are rigidity and guarding this two now what is this rigidity and guarding rigidity is reflex spasm of the skeletal muscle it is mainly seen in the abdominal wall muscles it becomes rigid if there is pain and what is guarding it is clinically reflex spasm that occurs and this reflex is a protective reflex which helps to protect underlying inflamed structure from the injury so these are the characteristic features of visceral pain now which are the causes of visceral pain they are one is inflammation for example appendicitis cholecystitis peritonitis pancreatitis any variety of inflammation produces visceral pain another cause for the visceral pain is ischemia decrease blood flow whenever blood flow is reduced metabolic end products are increased and they produce pain another cause for the pain that is chemicals for example if there is perforated peptic ulcer then gastric acids they are released either it is a peptic ulcer or it is a duodenal ulcer and this acids chemicals they also produce pain another cause for the visceral pain is over distension like suppose you can see here when there is intestinal obstruction above the obstruction there is over distension and this over distension cause collapse of the blood vessels that encircle the particular viscera and that produces ischemic pain another cause is muscle spasm whenever there is muscle spasm there is mechanical stimulation of pain nerve endings you can see here and that produces pain now if we have pain from the spastic viscus this pain is intermittent means we have a pain in the form of cramp like twitching and this pain increases reaches to highest degree of severity and then it decreases so this process of intermittent pain onset of pain gradually increases then decreases what is the cause for this intermittent cycle of the pain you can see here in case of spastic gut every time when peristaltic waves they come they travel along and excitable spastic gut we have a cramp and when this peristaltic waves they pass then pain subsides now neural pathway for visceral pain here also the receptors they are nociceptors and the nerve fibers carry the sensation of pain they are unmyelinated c fibers sensations they are transmitted by the lateral spinothalamic tract here the neurotransmitter is substance p now localization of visceral pain is difficult why is it so it has two reasons number 1 that patient's brain does not know we don't know that where our viscera exist we don't exactly know that here is the stomach we don't have conscious sensation of our viscera that is one reason second is suppose the sensation is coming from the viscera either it is from abdomen or thorax this visceral pain sensation they are transmitted by two ways number one is true visceral pathway and second that is parietal pathway now what is it true visceral pathway it is transmitted 
via the sensory pain fibers that is within the autonomic nerve bundle you can see here this is the visceral pathway which is transmitted within the autonomic nerve bundles and these sensations they are referred to the surface area of the body away from the painful organ and second one that is parietal sensation they are conducted directly into the local spinal nerve from the parietal peritoneum or from the pleura or pericardium and this sensation they are localized directly over the painful area so we have pain sensation from two areas number one that is from the visceral area and second that is from the parietal area so we cannot easily localize the pain sensation next variety of pain that is referred pain what is referred pain here pain sensation originates due to irritation of visceral organ but it is felt at other site than affected or injured site usually the pain sensation is referred to the somatic structure which is supplied by same neural segment now examples of referred pain that is pain due to myocardial ischemia that is referred to the left tip of the shoulder and left arm pain due to pathology of diaphragm referred to the tip of right shoulder renal pain that is referred to the loin region pain of gallstone that is referred to the tip of the right shoulder pain of the testicular stone referred to the abdomen and pain in the ovary referred to the umbilicus now what is the mechanism of referred pain there is dermatomal rule what is it pain sensation is referred to the structure with common embryonic origin and because of common embryonic origin they are innervated by common neural segments for example embryologically nerve supply to the heart as well as nerve supply to the left arm and left shoulder they arise from the same spinal segment now theories of the referred pain there are two theories one that is convergence theory and second is facilitation theory now what is convergence theory here first order neurons you can see here this is the first order neuron as we have discussed from the viscera as well as from the somatic structure to which pain is referred first order neurons from this two structures from this two they both enter at the same level and they both converge on the same spinothalamic neuron you can see here and we are learn to perceive somatic pain and therefore we have misinterpretation of the visceral pain as somatic pain next is facilitation theory what is it facilitation theory is explained by subliminal fringe effect what is subliminal fringe effect as we have discussed afferent impulses coming from the visceral structure as well as afferent impulses from the somatic structure they converge at the same spinal segment you can see now here afferent impulses from the visceral structure this one they produce subliminal fringe effect on afferent impulses from somatic structure so what happens this afferent impulses from visceral structure they decrease the excitability threshold of the spinothalamic neurons now what happens when the threshold is reduced slight activity in this pathway that results in the transmission of pain signals 
Normally, this light activity will not transmit the pain signals. But here, because of facilitation or you can say subliminal fringe effect, slight activity in this pathway is being transmitted and the person feels pain. This is facilitation theory. Next is radiating pain. Here, visceral pain is experienced at both the sides, local side as well as referred side. For example, pain of appendicitis from right iliac fossa it radiates to the umbilical region now dual transmission of pain signal what is the mechanism pain impulses they pass first from the appendix through visceral pain fibers which are located within the sympathetic nerve bundle and then they are transmitted into the spinal cord at T10 and T11 segment. And this pain is referred to an area around the umbilicus. And pain impulses originating from parietal peritoneum. It causes pain of sharp type directly over the parietal peritoneum that is right lower quadrant of the abdomen so this is the mechanism for dual transmission of pain signal next is projection pain law of projection as we have discussed when the pain pathway is stimulated anywhere then conscious sensation is felt at the site of receptors so here if the limb is cut and when we are stimulating the pain pathway or when we are stimulating the pathway of the uh, sensation then the person feels pain at the area of the receptor located and that is law of projection and that is mechanism for the projection pain that is seen in case of phantom limb. So this is all about clinical types of pain.